Common Council of City of Connersville is now in session. Please rise. I'll read the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone that would please silence their phones. Our invocation will be Rev. Mm -hmm. John Reynolds. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for another opportunity to gather. Lord, thank you for each of these city leaders and their families and the time that they put into making this city a better place. God, I just thank you for your sovereignty. We're thankful that you are the God of this nation, the God of this world, and even the God of this city. Amen. So, God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you would just give wisdom and guidance. I pray that the voices that are used, God, would bring glory to your name. And I pray, God, that the decisions that are made would lead our city uh, in the direction that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, you, Thank you sir. Have a good evening. Have a good day. Again, please silence your phones. Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone tonight. So we'll go ahead and have roll call. Councilman Durham. Councilman Frank. Here. Councilman Bishop. Present. Councilman Nobby. Councilwoman Montgomery. Present. Councilwoman Phillips. Present. Councilman mm -hmm. Nettie. Present. Okay, we have enough for a quorum tonight. As, uh, you have the, the minutes of the February 4th meeting. Is there any additions or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept as presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the, the uh, minutes of February 4th. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, go on down to new business. Uh, Mike? You have to close the council meeting. You have to okay. close the council meeting. I'm going ahead and close the council meeting for our public hearing. So, uh, I'll give everyone that wants to speak about five minutes, okay? So, uh, the agenda way is you can have a little more, I guess. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I just wanted to um, introduce the area that we'll be talking about tonight. And I have two guests here. Um, one is Mike Klein Peter with um, Okra and um, Ashley Guest with Strand. But um, I gave you guys a copy um, of the layout of the area that we are talking about. And on the map, pretty much <clears throat> runs from um, Country Club Road to Memorial Drive to here to wherever beach. Beaches up, it kind of shaped a um, L-shaped area. So this is the area we're talking about. Um, I've been here four and a half years. I've been up on these sites dozens of times to take a look at the problems. But um, we're actually doing two projects in the area. One is Major Drive. This water actually runs south to north. And the other project, which is this Memorial Drive project, which we're applying for the OCA grant, uh, runs uh, north to south. And I got some photographs I'll kind of show you, but pretty much this water runs down through here mm -hmm. through these neighborhoods. It's trying to get to the Frazee Ditch. And um, it's a natural um, flow um, of the area. If John could bring up the first photograph. This old picture. <laughs> This is a little photograph back in the, uh, in the 60s before before houses was in the area. Yep. This is Major Drive Deer Trail. It disappeared on me. Uh, it's okay. Um, so this is, a, if, if you look back in the 60s, we already had water standing here. So this was actually a natural drain that went trying to get to the low area. Um, one, it, so this is, going to be a, this is going to be a problem because this is where water drains from all over the area into this. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we have our hands full. This little pond, there's a house that sits there, 601 Matthews, yep. right here. And, um, and the, pit, the other picture I'm getting ready to show you kind of will start from Memorial Drive and head that way over the last couple storms that we've had.
This is um, the Merrill Drive. I'm just a little bit north of, um, west of the um, major drive area. Water's coming down this hill, cutting through this house, house into this ditch. Then it continues. This is looking from Memorial Drive, looking towards 7th Street. Um, water comes down the hill. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of drains here, shoots out. You see that there's a pipe in the middle of this. This water's probably four or five feet deep right now. And there's a pipe that's taking it, trying to get it to freeze the, um, just, pipe's not quite big enough. And this, this um, was taken in 2016, I believe, this photograph. So when it comes across 7th Street, it goes behind these houses, also gets the drains uh, from the west up the hill. There's supposed to be another pipe here that takes water, doesn't quite take enough, and it continues going to 601 Matthews, that's on the corner. Mike, I have a quick question, if I may, while he's changing pictures. On that very first picture, did they only just put one main drain in that whole plat when they when they sold it off to start building houses in, is that the only one and only main drain that's in there? There's no other one at all? Up, more, up Memorial Drive? Yeah. There's a few up Memorial Drive. Not just one. Um, but there's only, a, I think there's only one big one at the, at the very bottom. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. It, this is the corner of 6 and Matthews. There's a drain there. It's, it's taking water, just not quite big enough mm -hmm. to hold this water. So. If it doesn't take enough, it continues going across the road, and there's some houses here um, that gets wet at times. And that was taken a couple of years ago. Now, this next photograph was taken during that big rainstorm we had uh, a week ago. It's not typical, but... Um, <coughs> this is a backyard. It's <laughs> good of, place um, for pool. <laughs> 13 and 6th Street. <laughs> Water comes through this yard. Let's try and get to this ditch back here to head towards Frazee. Um, her house also got pretty wet. Her basement and her uh, living room, everything. What was the address on that one? 313 6th Street. This is um, looking from Arians. This is where water's trying to go. Um, this, uh, this was also taken a couple of years ago. I didn't get too many photographs of that last storm because I was kind of out of the ordinary. So this is kind of what it looks like for heavy downpours. Um, so water's trying to get through here. Um, next photograph. So it's, it's trying to hit the frazy bitch. And the last one was from the storm. Um, coming from <coughs> that ditch, it's not taking, there's a, there's a drain right, right here. It's not taking Holy water God. enough and it flies over. Country Club Road into here, and it's tr you know still continue to try and get the Frazee ditch. So that's a quick overview of the area we're trying to fix, or at least contain. Um, I'm gonna say what kind of what size pipes going to take to handle that volume of water? That's, that's, really that's a lot of volume. That's, that's really yes, nice the There's a lot, um, but the stream will discuss the project details. But I mean, I mean, is this a hundred year rain picture or not? I think that. I don't know if anything could stop that. That's what I mean. We're, we're is that a hundred year rain or? <coughs> Some say it was. Um, okay, that was my question. I knew you're not going to stop that. But. What really hurt that was all the rain we had, what, the three weeks before yeah, in the snow. Yeah, froze, yeah. yeah. Those, other, those other photographs I was showing that was taken 2015 16 should be able to contain that. Um, the so, tough thing about storm water is when this starts in the parts where there is combined sewer. Now, the sanitary sewer can't flow because all the storm water in it. Mm. So where does this sanitary go? Just not separated up there? No. Some of oh. it is, but it's not. Some on Woodside, uh, wow. Westwood Boulevard separated. Yeah. So, so, they were still. so this is part of our long-term control plan, too. It will right. fit in with that. So uh, Mike Klein Peter is here to talk about the Oakland Grant. Thanks, Mike. 
Good evening, Council. My name is Mike Kleinpeter with Kleinpeter Consulting Group. Uh, thank you for having me here this evening. You guys might remember last year we applied for a wastewater grant for Lift Station and were successful in receiving $600,000 with that. So I was really excited about that and appreciate the opportunity to come back and work on this project here. Um, <clears throat> the purpose of the hearing tonight is to discuss the city's application for grant funding through the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs. We will be applying specifically for a $600,000 grant. The city will be contributing a local match of $743,400 from the stormwater fund. Say that again, please. $743,400 out of the stormwater fund. And how much is the grant? The grant's for $600,000. We got a proposal due on May 3rd uh, and an application <coughs> due on June 28th. So the first step is to have a public hearing, let the public voice any comments or concerns they may have for the project, um, hear from the council, see what their thoughts are. So with that, uh, this is a very competitive application. Uh, I think this is a very competitive project, but we are competing against other cities and towns, and usually they get more requests than they have funds. So. Um, there's no guarantee you're going to get it on your first try, but um, I think we've got a competitive project should we just decide to go forward. Mike, can I sure. ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, the, the, what I know of grants mm -hmm. is there is an X amount there available, and we match it with 10%, 20%, 30%, or whatever. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you are said a grant of 600000 but the utilities is putting in over 700000 Right. So that's. I mean, so at a minimum for these Oka grants, you got to have a minimum of 20% match at a minimum. Okay. But I think due to the size of this project, a 20% match isn't going to get us to the total project cost. Oh. And Oka caps out at $600,000 okay. is the max. Well, that's not the match. No, that's right. total project. That's that's two okay. That's so the total good. project cost is going to be 1.343. That makes, that makes okay. sense. $1,343,400. Okay. That didn't make sense. That makes sense. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Thank you. I was thinking yeah. the same thing here, that's an odd yeah. match. Yeah, me too. Thank you. Well, we All should right. have, but yeah. But Everybody. that also, um, with our match being higher, will also um, make the grant application look a little better. Oh, right, so I, I think we have some things working in our favor in this application. One, this is part of our long-term control plan. Two, we have a decent amount of local match on this project. Uh, the other thing that Ochre really looks at is resident distress. How are residents impacted by this project and how will they benefit should this project move forward? So I think we've got a lot of residential photos, which is good. Um, we need to get as many letters of support from residents that live in the area talking about issues they're experiencing so we can describe that to the scoring committee to score well. So uh, I know Mike and them have already started doing that, um, and, and so they're going to continue to do that. We've already got a couple letters. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Ashley to give you more of the details specifically well, about Another thing, too, Mike, by making an offer like that is showing that we are serious about it because mm -hmm. we would try to lowball it or something. They probably wouldn't give it to us. Yeah, I mean, it's very competitive, so. um, but I think we've got a lot of good things working in our favor, mm -hmm. and the other thing is we're starting early. It's not due till June, and it's been my experience. The sooner you start and start getting these letters from residents, and you can build a better case for why you should get awarded. Another so. thing that's, a, that's high priority to me, because I've sat in a couple meetings with Mike and his crew, that's not only a, just a, a physical issue to homeowners, but it's also a health issue. Very seriously. If this was summertime, we would be fighting mosquitoes. With it would be awful. I agree. I agree. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ashley. I'm sorry, I didn't mean. You're that. all right. Thank you. Hey, Ashley Getz. I think I've met most of you before. Uh, with Strand Associates, we are doing the engineering on this project. Um, the project was part of your utility master plan that was done last year, and also. As both Mike's mentioned, your long-term control plan, which is required to be done uh, with the IDEM, so because it will be helping your combined sewer system by taking the stormwater away from from your combined sewer. Uh, so, Mike, bottomly covered the why this is needed really well. So I was just going to go through the details of what would actually be going in. So there's two different areas. Memorial Drive to the south is one area. And that will have about 570 feet of 24-inch sewer 
970 feet of 30 inch sewer and 1100 feet of 36 inch storm sewer. Um, and that storm sewer will run from Memorial Drive to West Com Country Club Road and it will s sort of follow um, public right of way but there will need to be easements on some of it just because there's not enough room in the road right of way. And then the other part is the 9th Street improvements and that includes about 70 feet of 12 inch storm sewer and 500 feet of open channel between Burton Avenue and Major Drive. What street please? Burton. Burton. You know what I mean? 9th Street. 9th. Okay, thank you. Can I ask um, a question, please? Yeah. Going back to the very first one where you had 570, 970, and 1100. Uh-huh. Did you say you have 6 inches? Is that what you're going to use? No, it starts with 24 and goes all the way up to 36 inches. Okay. I was going to say that's kind so of small. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that would be too small. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I'm missing. Ninth Street, is, I don't see it in view on this. So, guys, is, it, is that the part that keeps it com coming off 10th Street Hill? And it's over? up there by the church. Yeah. High, yeah. And a lot of water flows down that hillside towards Memorial Drive. Yeah. And, and that would and actually Major take Drive. it over to there's a ditch behind Major Drive between behind houses there and it would take that water over to there. Okay. To that ditch. It's not marked with the bold blue, that's the reason why yeah. it threw me off. And that's really it. Does this include the ditch? On it, separate, like that, separate project. I'm saying is unless you fix the ditch, this is not going to be good. Right. Yeah, we had a we actually had a neighborhood public meeting last week. Attorney David Butch went and so did Mike Bishop to um, support us. And uh, we had probably what 15 residents. Yeah. And uh, as soon as the weather <laughs> breaks and it dries up, they'll be starting on that ditch this summer. So the freezing ditches be worked on. No, also? the uh, major no. the major drive deer trail where some of this water is yeah. going to flow into. To go north. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, Questions? Ashley. Is, is there anyone? Is there anybody out here to speak? Would you like to speak? Yes, I would actually. Well, come on up and give All us your right. name and your address, please. Right. I received a letter in the mail actually, and. Uh, my name is Tom Cates and I live at uh, 1425 West Memorial Drive. I'm at the very bottom of the hill. So he had referenced the way the water flows. Well, it does come down the hill, but it comes down the hill and um, it used to come towards the crank house. Well, it still does, but it comes down through the sidewalk and in the ditch. And it comes through my front yard between my house and the tree. And I have video, I have 2018 and 19 video and pictures of all this. Um, it just became ridiculous because you come off my front porch onto the stoop and you step into three inches of water. Um, and you have to buy a sump pump each year to, just to keep, uh, to keep the water out. And I, I know that's an issue with a lot of people. But uh, it's come to a place right here. Uh, no, that's across the street. It'd be the opposite. Right across, uh, keep going, th yes. Mine's, it, but it's brown now. <laughs> yep. And there is actually another drain behind there to the right, and if you just go, keep on going back, there is another major drain behind there. Um, just, if you keep on going straight back where that big tree is, you go back and just down, dip down. There is a major drain right there also. And then to the right over here, behind the black car, just the other side of our property, there's a manhole on, on the easement, which overflows with sewage and water because you come back there and you see the water and the toilet, a lot of things coming out of there, like it did this time. Um, so it was pretty bad. Um, and then the field next door, it floods, but then when it's not flooding, you see water actually spouting out of the ground at some point. And when it, when it does start to overflow, you see the water coming down the hill, and then you start on Memorial Drive, you see the water shooting out of the side of the, out of the hill onto uh, four, to 1420, which is uh, Mrs. Uh, Reed's house, into her yard. It's actually like a water fountain shooting into her yard. Mike, is this being looked at, this part? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's pretty bad. Um, but I have 2018 uh, 18 and 19 photos and video of this, and um, uh, 
it's back. Do you mind if we have that? You can have it. I bought it yesterday, so. Okay. Am I correct that the empty lot there you see between the houses? City owns that. Yes, city owns it. Yep. And nothing's built though because that's part of the ditch. Um, I think it was for sale at one point, and then I don't know what happened. Uh, the well, city took it like over. Build or, on it or anything. So. I think if you if you improve it and take it out of the flood, I don't think it's actually in the flood. We're not in the flood. Well, that's where the green of the ditch way yeah. is, though. I'm not sure to tell you the truth, but it would not be a good place to build a home. <laughs> no, but you could take it out of there probably. Um, it'd just be a lot of work. I know there is a, a wooden drain uh, on the empty lot. There's an, a wooden grate that was put there uh, for drainage purposes. Um, it's right in front of there somewhere, just past the drain there to the right where he has his arrow, there's an actual wooden grate that's been there quite a while for drainage, right there where he's got his arrow. Um, and then if I can go up here, I'll show you. Right back here is where you have the second major drain. Mm -hmm. Right back here, and then there's a manhole right here. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of where things are. But you can have the, uh, the flash drive and- Yeah, because um, the more pictures we have, the better off we right. are. Right, so that's kind of where things are. But I'm sure there's other people who wanted to come but couldn't make it, so, uh, okay, but yeah. I yeah, appreciate your time. No. Thank you. Mayor, if I may add, uh, at this meeting, I was told by one of the homeowners that all the vacant lots that's left up there have been bought by some corporation out of Indianapolis. Are you guys aware of that? And I don't know what the law stipulates, Dave, but they shouldn't be allowed to build houses in there till we get this problem fixed, I don't think. Well, that's something I'm going to have to take up with the... Uh, uh, area planning. Yeah. This is the area planning right. and, and the, uh, Bill McDaniel, as far as he's the one that issues building permits. So it's one thing to purchase it, it's another thing to build on it. We have to get a building permit to do so. They got to be pretty high to do since it's already been plotted and yeah. approved. That's why I'm on point. Yeah. I don't know if you can change enforce any. Well, I think that's something we would have to do is in, insist that no one else builds out there. But just going to, it's just going to be it's a continuous. For us. It's going to be a continuous problem. So uh, we, we should petition them not to allow any more building out there. Oh, I agree. The first so. There was this one couple that told me they were running four sump pumps, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they had a they had a regular. I don't know if you guys seen that picture, but they had a regular dam built in their basement around those sump pumps to keep the water from coming in, and they couldn't keep up. Four of them. It's just, I feel sorry for him, I do. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Okay, Brad. So the, the root of all this is the major drive area. That is what's got all this screwed up. They, when they started developing that, all that water off of 10th Street used to just run down into that area. Well. The people at the utilities at the time didn't have any other choice to get rid of it. They put it in the sewer at the top of A Street Hill, just below Arians. And that is why that whole sewer floods. And now that other stuff can take water because it floods with all that 10th Street water. So if we get that 10th Street water out of the sewer, that's going to be a, that's going to help it a lot right there. We get that and move it over to the side of the road, mm -hmm. separate it, take it across. Then all that other stuff will be able to work a little bit better. I would hope, yeah. And once we replace all the stuff that's got holes in it, we should be in pretty good shape. Because you go on the north side of 12th Street, that little pond is a lake. Yeah. And there's only a four inch metering pipe over there. So it's gonna take a long time to drain that, so. But that major drive area just used yeah. to catch all this water, no problem. It's And then they start building on it and all this water had to go somewhere. And they put it in the sewer and that's what started the problems. That one photo that Mike showed on Memorial Drive of the little waterfall going into the a ditch that is, I believe that's water's coming off 10th of Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but most of that that he showed ends up in the sewer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what that was backing up was it could only get in there so fast, it eventually gets in that sewer manhole, mm -hmm. runs under the road. So it's not backing up, right? Okay, I'm going to go ahead. If there's no one else speak, I'm going ahead and close the public meeting. Oh, Mike, Mayor, I just want to say one thing. Uh, for any residents that are watching out there, like I said, Okra does, they're, they're very, they look to see how these residents are impacted. So if you live in this area and you are impacted, uh, we would appreciate you to write a letter uh, stating your name, your address, how you're impacted by this stormwater issue, whether it be, you know, the 
you've had damage to your basement, house, you've gravels washed out in your driveway, I mean, any way you've been impacted by this, um, that's going to make all the difference in who's successful with these applications and who's not. So if anybody's out there, I encourage you to, to write a letter. It can be an email. It can be a handwritten letter to the utilities department. Just get us something to help us with this process. Thank you. Guys. Is there anybody else like to say anything? Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. Now, council, you, you can speak whatever you want to do here. I'm familiar with some issues out there just on a history of utilities uh, and it's been ongoing uh, for years uh, it's just finally come to a head where you can't let it go any longer it appears as if uh, the amount of money if the grant would be a full 600 mm -hmm. that's that's a full it would be if, if you got one it'd be the full 600 correct thousand. It sounds like to me they're confident that the 743000 that they have uh, either on hand or make so many payments or something. But uh, I'd be certainly in favor of uh, helping all those people out there who've been impacted for years. Uh, and that way they could later, if they chose to, sell their home stating that the issue has been taken care of. Yeah. I agree. Thank you, David. Anybody else got to say anything? After just completely gutting my basement because of a flood, I know what it feels like. <laughs> That's no fun. My problem's not that. My problem's fixed, but it is no fun. I can imagine what you're going through. Okay. Anybody else got anything they'd like to say? Now, do we need to take a vote in support of this? Is that what we got to do? I don't think so, unless you guys want to. I'm gonna... oh, we'll go ahead and take one, and that way it will show our support. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I need a motion to support this. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor to support this, say, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. So I guess that takes that card out of hope. It is bad out there. I remember reading meters out there. Either. Yeah, that's another story. But anyway, going down, down to items B and C, Rosemary. <clears throat> Resolution 2019-08 uh, is a resolution to reimburse $199.99 into the police telephone and $51.82 to be appropriated in the first aid uniforms. Resolution 2019-09 um, is a um, resolution to reimburse $22.96 into the police other contractual service. I think both accept your Yes. So just getting money back. <laughs> I move that we pass uh, resolution uh, 2019 08 and 09. Second. We don't have to take I have a motion to second to pass resolutions 2019 08 and 09. All in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, that's passed. Thank you. Now, item D, if you're right, if you've got an agenda, item D. Uh, it was printed wrong in the paper, so we have to do go to another meeting on that one. So we won't be doing that one tonight. And so is there any old business to come before the council? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, is the uh, city vehicle auction still a go for this Saturday? Yes. Yeah. At Coons Auction? Yes, sir. What time? Yes, sir. What time? They usually start around 10. I'm not sure. I, I, I can't just, say for sure. But. If it was, I want to make sure it was known so that people get over there and find themselves a bargain and drive it home. <laughs> you can usually Dave, you need a dump truck. <laughs> you can usually view things too on Friday night uh, before those auctions, but they usually start around 10. Yeah. I can't say for sure on that one. But they Guaranteed to get off the lot. Yeah. I have a question, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Where are we at on the project with 7th Street about taking out the stoplight, putting in. That's still being done. Like, I haven't got anything from Carol yet, but that's going to be soon. I mean, how soon have we been talking well, about it for? That. 7th and Central? Yeah, 7th and Central. Um, they're going to uh, switch the light to flashing as soon as the street department will install some stop signs going east to west. So that is what we're waiting on. That's the first step. Okay. 
So do they have the signs ordered, or do you know that? I don't know. Well, usually they make them. Well, there's a person that makes them for us. Okay. Uh, did they take out the um, the lights at, at 21st and Western? Was there a, was a flashing lights and They have something? not removed the one that's still standing yet. Okay. I mean, weather permitting, you're not going to get too many people out there to Return remove all. the equipment yet. Business and it, but I guess I we'll figure it out. Jump right in there. We'll take them all. Well, I was going to tell people if you missed the ball game the other night with the guys' girls dance, uh, oh. I'm kind of partial to going to the game just because both my nephews play on the basketball team, but it's that's a fun time to come out and just really see Connorsville. And the guys' girls dance phenomenal. Um, I can't dance with a lick, but I enjoy watching it. It's, a, it's always a good time. So come out, support the community, and come to that dance. Same thing, it's good to see we got the grant for the sidewalk. Um, I would like to just propose a suggestion, and that is if we could put a committee together to work on that with, uh, just lost the name of it now, Main Street. What's in there? I'm meeting with NDOT Thursday. Well, I know, but for the design, have Main Street and even some council oh. representation on there. Because get a lot of, start getting the community to work together. Because I'm hearing a lot of comments about downtown, the lights, we love them. I love the lights. Uh, just brainstorming on really making this what looks good and getting people to work together. Yeah, Discover Connorsville has been very good about yeah. them and uh, but just H make HPC, they even step in some once in a while. Just making a suggestion. Yeah. Uh, okay, also I'll let you know today that on the airport board, I, uh, with Bob Stam passing away, uh, I appointed Ed Harold to that. Mm -hmm. And on the vacant park board, uh, Scott Keepaver took that position. So. I got one more the position to fill on area planning. So if anybody wants, anybody knows anybody interested in area planning, uh, I've contacted a few people, but they've never got back with me or anything. So that's usually a good sign. <laughs> who can do that? Who can, yeah, who can? Who, who would qualify for that? Can maybe that if somebody's listening? You have to be. You have to live in town. In town. Yeah. That's the only requirement. Yep. Just a citizen. Who the runs the meeting? Who is it? Uh, usually, it's it's been done by. Uh, I don't know who the president of the APC is right now. Well, Bill McDaniel runs a meeting. The president was there at Harold. Okay, so. And so anything. Okay, uh, anybody else got anything? Okay, I'll open down. Are you done, Chad? Yes, that's, that's it. <laughs> uh, on public forum, anybody like to say anything? I would like to echo what Chad said about the ball games. If you got... If you don't go to the Spartan Games, you're missing it because I, I think we have by far the you have most more fun at the Spartan Games if nothing else. Just if you come and watch the entry, the the beginning and oh, yeah. you know the, it's it's a production. Well, there's like, a school up north, the gym similar to ours, who's copied our <laughs> our whole and who would pre game routine. Yeah. I don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mentioned any names. Yeah, but uh, uh, imitations is a serious form of flattery, and it's fantastic. And they did a fantastic job. Did My job. daughter did that when she was in Spartanettes, and it's a special night, and they really did a great job. So. Okay. Anyone else? If not, I'll, I'll move to having a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion second to adjourn. All in favor signal saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Adjourn.